it's Trish Weidinger with allthingsplants.com and I'm going to give you a short tour of my herb spiral that Dave built me. Um, this is south facing and so it, this side gets blasted with the sun and of course that makes this north facing which means it doesn't get blasted with the sun. So I put more things on this side, things that don't like to be burned up in our Texas heat and things that don't mind that of course get on the south. And so um, this year I am growing eggplants on the south and that was sort of an accident. But now hang on a minute, you said this is an herb spiral. I know, it's a happy accident. Sometimes things just sort of get plunked in my herb spiral uh, and that's sort of what happened and it was doing so well that I left it there. Uh, the Cuban oregano is hardly hardy for us and so I had it on the south facing uh, so it can get nice and big. And many, So like in the winter time the sun is always shining on this part of the bed. Right, which means that it, there's more of a chance that it'll overwinter there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, sage, which doesn't mind the heat. Yeah, the, the brick probably uh, absorbs a lot of the radiant um, heat from the sun. It does. Releasing it uh, and probably adding a couple degrees of hardiness to, to the winter. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't work flawlessly, mm -hmm. I've noted. Yeah. I tried to grow a uh, lavender last year that was only hardy for like 9b and it didn't make it so okay uh, we we uh, we always just experiment mm -hmm. um you'll notice come in here dave and, and check this out what do we, what do we have what well do we, right what? here you can see how it's shrinking down oh yeah look at that Oof, that's like what six inches deep there <sighs> yeah four, the other side. four to six inches yeah i see yeah right so yeah. this is where uh, the hugel material is sinking down mm -hmm. and this is where I will be adding material to this area. Um, contrast that really by this eggplant right here for when I, when I planted the eggplant I topped up this material and so it's level again and so that's mm -hmm. what we mean when we say that we're constantly adding material to it. Um, and so I let the top here it's filled with the oregano which gets really tall until I give it a haircut and it, it sinks back in. Um, the tarragon is right right over on there. I have different... I smell that curry. Yeah, I have different um, speed, uh, cultivars of sage, the broadleaf and the narrow leaf. Mm, I love this broadleaf. I made sausage with a wild hog that we shot a couple months ago and I uh, helped myself to this sage. Right. Um, I have the majorum. Uh, and that right. majorum is on the west side. And uh, it seems to like that really hot sun that blasted on the, the west yeah, side. Yeah, the curry likes it even more. I mean, this curry has just exploded. Yeah. Uh, the winter... I'll Every time you touch it, it, it's like, <laughs> oof, the, the air is full. That mm. uh, winter savory oh, yeah. is happy over here. Mm -hmm. That... This, I grew salvia just in full sun, bug got me. Grasshopper. Uh, in full sun, it didn't really like it very much, so that's why I put it on the north side. And now it's happy. Love it. Uh, it used to be a broadleaf sage would just really dry and get crinkly and all of that in, in the heat. So it's really happy. And then I have the French, French thyme uh, right there too. And it could probably go on the west side, but... Not everything can go on the west side, so <laughs> something has to live back here. Um, the chives are here at the bottom, and the comfrey is here at the bottom. Because they like a whole lot of water. And believe it or not, these garlic chives, I cut them back every two or three weeks because I sell it at the farmer's market. This guy, I cut it back, and it keeps coming back. So amazing. It is amazing. Clearly happy. Now... We're looking at the east side of the spiral right now, and this is the side that gets sun during the morning, right. and then from lunch on, it doesn't get sun anymore. Right. And that comfrey, it looks bad, but for most of the year, it looks good, but man, we are, we're sitting on like August 1st right now, and to have a comfrey that's even alive in August is, is pretty miraculous. It's not in full shade. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. And there's no amending on that soil. That's just plunk, plunked in the, in the pathway. Right. Oh. Well, and I've harvested from that comfrey. Oh, have you? I have. That's that's this year's um, infused oils as well as I've mulched with the leaves too. So it looks much worse than it is. That's a harvested comfrey. Yeah. Now I I see a um, a hose. 
That's a soaker hose. Mm -hmm. um, how often do you use that? I have not used that soaker hose at this year at all. So how do you keep these plants watered? Well, I often just throw a hose in the very top of it and let it... Uh, so the water will actually go down, the water will go down the, down the spiral? It does, it does go down the spiral. Um, and then I have to water the eggplant separately because it's much thirstier than the herbs. Herbs are often very, I don't want to say they're escapic, but they don't have heavy watering needs. Mm. Uh, minus the temporary, of course. But, um, you know, you just don't have to drown them. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, and what, what did you fill up this container? What, what material did you use? This, this is a hoople bed. And so that's uh, huge logs. I mean, we had giant green logs in there. Green meaning not dried, fresh, freshly cut, um, various sticks and branches and leaves and hay and, and then soil and compost on top of all that. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Bye.